All right, y'all. So we have a pretty interesting headline here. Bitcoin's narrative as a store of value is being decimated as we speak. So obviously, this is a great time for investors. If you know anything about investing, especially when you've done your research into a great investment, usually when the headlines is crazy, the markets are looking really, really bad. This, it brings us like discounts. We can we can buy our favorite assets at a discounted rate. Now, obviously, Bitcoin is going down like Bitcoin, like it's huge right now. It's a huge buy opportunity if you actually have conviction towards Bitcoin. And if you don't understand why you should have conviction towards Bitcoin, I would suge suggest just stay sticking here on the channel, subscribing if you want to and checking out more things with me or just like looking up Bitcoin. Start to, to do your own research, understand the narratives, understand both sides. Like don't just stick to one side of an argument understand both sides understand where both sides are coming from and you make your own decision either you're going to believe in it or you're not and based on your decision you're either going to be right or you're going to be wrong like but you have to be willing to have your own conviction so that way you can live with your decision but either way here on this channel we believe that bitcoin is going very very far so narratives like this is amazing because it scares people who don't do their research who don't do their due diligence and it makes people think that this is the end which allows for people like me to pick up a lot more Bitcoin at lower rates. So, I mean, this is a blessing for somebody like me, but um, yeah, that, that being said, let's jump into it. Let's actually see what's being said. Let's see if this is just a clickbait title or if they're finna explain why Bitcoin is um, dead. So yeah, let's get into it. Sharply lower as the global sell-off. Bitcoin sharply lower as the global sell-off intensifies. Join us now, Kath Kathleen Brightman, co-founder of the blockchain uh, tease us. It's good to see you uh, this morning. Yes, thank you for having me. We had uh, Tom Lee on earlier talking about um, something that happened in Japan, perhaps. Well, it, it, I hear a rumor, some, yeah. <laughs> with some, uh, not just a carry trade, but something with Bitcoin, something with a big holder. Do you know anything about that? Um, no, I think, I think basically what we're seeing is something similar to what happened at the beginning of COVID, where um, folks get a sense of something that looks like a recession, and the first thing they decide to sell is their pretend internet money. Um, but uh, yeah, the news coming out of Japan obviously like correlates with quite a bit of that. So it's nothing different than margin calls. And if you have stock, first thing they decide to sell is their pretend internet money is a crazy statement coming out of the gate. She didn't waste no time getting into it. So I, it sounds like she might not be for Bitcoin. I'm not really sure who she is, um, but she's into, um, or maybe that's, that was just like taking a shot at people who don't really understand crypto. I mean, I don't really know, but, um, but yeah, that, that was just like a crazy opening. But I mean, th this is how people are looking at it. People who don't really have conviction because they don't even know why they're investing in Bitcoin, why crypto is a big thing. That's how people see it. They're like, let's get rid of uh, the most risky assets first, not realizing that Bitcoin is honestly the least risky. But I mean, that's that's my own personal opinion. But yeah, but it's, it's just like it's just like the narrative that taking a normal route, having a regular job is the secure route as opposed to having your own business being the risky thing when in reality having your own business is a lot less risky than actually working for someone who can choose to fire you or do whatever they want with you whenever they want like i mean obviously within ethical guidelines i mean whatever but yeah you get what i'm saying like when when it's like people can interpret things two different ways so it, it's it's kind of it's, it's crazy you never know which side is the right side I, I mean that's why you just have to have conviction in what you believe in and you follow your heart or bitcoin or any assets that that are sellable you can you can take profits and, and maybe cover what you need to cover elsewhere nothing further than that i mean gold didn't go down i no, i think bitcoin gets a bit of a shellacking because it's uh you know definitely cast more as a um, speculative currency, it's not treated the same as a lot of other equities. You just called it pretend internet money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's, uh... I, I, people, I, you know, you're saying the quiet part out loud for some people. Um, I think it's good to acknowledge that it's an experiment. And therefore, are you a believer in this experiment? Very much so. But I think it's also good to take it with uh, a grain of salt and know that it's a very young, uh, young market. And you think it's a store of value? I think that narrative is being decimated as we speak. <laughs> so therefore, you don't think it's a store of value? Um, I've never really bought into that narrative. Um, I think as basically... It doesn't sound like she's really big on crypto. It does, I mean, or it doesn't sound like she's really big on Bitcoin if she doesn't think that it's a store of value. Um, and thinking that it's being decimated just because there's turbulence is crazy because, I mean, it's a new emerging asset and it's still a, a, got a long way to go regulations it, we just got the etfs i mean it's a it's a lot it's a lot you know 
it's a lot of work. Bitcoin has a lot of work to do. It's a lot of development that needs to be made in this entire space as a whole. So, um, yeah, I don't believe that the store value thing is being decimated. I believe that it's in the early stages and there's still these narratives are still running rampant because the majority of the people holding Bitcoin or buying Bitcoin don't actually know why they're buying Bitcoin or why they're holding Bitcoin. It's just a lack of education still. But that doesn't change what Bitcoin is. It just changes people's opinions sway and change based on how ignorant they are and how informed they are. So, yeah. Basically, this becomes a larger part of institutional portfolios. You can expect that it's going to correlate with more assets. So you just think of it as a speculative stock? No, I think it's a new way to exchange value with someone who you may or may not know um, across the Internet. But if you're if you're Larry Fink telling people to go buy the ETF or some of the other. But she, I think you're saying that that. To call any asset a store of value is, on any given day, the store of value might be X, on another day it might be 2X, on another day it may be 0.5X. That means it's, it's not a store of value, but you think that there is a utility to having Bitcoin be able to transact across the Internet? Yeah, very much so. I think so, it addresses a corner case on the web. It, 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 it addresses a core case on a the web. A corner case on corner the web. Case. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be a store of value, to be, to be something that's valuable and used? I think that it, it addresses a fundamental problem and a technical problem that uh, isn't necessarily a panacea for everyone. I think the store of value meme is like a meme just like a lot of other crypto culture that like sometimes makes sense and other times doesn't. Another sort of nonsense um, meme around Bitcoin is that it's backed I'm by so math. Confused. <laughs> how yeah. I am so confused. How much value now? should it be storing? Ten thousand dollars worth of value. I think that, I mean, I think that people are looking more so towards the future. They like w what she's bringing up is cases that people make for the future, and and like only so much Bitcoin is ever going to exist. You can't just keep printing more. Um, just stuff like that, where the uh, a store of value is like houses can depreciate houses like like it's like it's good it'll be a point in time well this is the belief anyway it'll be a point in time where people won't even take the u.s currency anymore you can't just exchange your dollars for bitcoin anymore because the dollar will be worthless as opposed to bitcoin will maintain its value and at the point where the dollar is worthless and you can't even buy bitcoin using dollars then obviously that's scary for people holding the dollar, but it, it's good for people holding Bitcoin, obviously. Now, that that's a huge narrative, and that's, it's, it's bold to say one currency, like, it's, it's bold to say this new, this new idea could overtake an actual currency like the dollar, but at the same time, we see what they're doing with the dollar and how, if you know the history of money and how it started off being backed by something and then it eventually became backed by nothing, which is why they can imprint un unlimited amounts of it, if you understand this, you realize the dollar's on borrowed time. It, it has been for a long time now. And if we're going to put our money and ju it's just going to be in bank accounts, which is just numbers on the screen because they don't even actually have that money themselves, then cryptocurrency, where you can actually have the thing you're putting your money into, it it is the best alternative. It makes It makes sense. It makes very much more logical sense than any other narrative I've heard personally, but that's just my opinion. Value per coin or $150,000 worth of value per coin? Well, that's for the market to decide. <laughs> Let me ask you a, a, just a different question because this is dollars worth of value. Storing $10,000 worth of value per coin or a hundred. How much value now. should it be storing? $10,000 worth of value per coin or $150,000 worth of value per coin? Well, that's for the market to decide. <laughs> Let me ask you a, a, just a different question because this is important on the screen for those who have bought in by. She doesn't say much. I don't, I don't. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't really say much. I don't, I don't know if she knows what she's talking about versus if she's just like, you know, kind of into crypto. It seems like she's more so kind of into crypto as opposed to actually knowing. But I would have to look her up. I got to I got to see if she knows what she's talking about. because I've, I've never heard of her. By the ETF. OK, so look, if you, if you look at a Bitcoin ETF today, they're all down about 17 percent, something on the order of 17 percent. I want you to now can we take the screen back up on Bitcoin itself. Because you're going to see that there's a differential between the ETF and Bitcoin, the underlying currency, right? You're going to see it's off about 13 percent. Oh, boy. Okay. Do you see the distinction here? Yeah. There's an arbitrage situation yeah. going on. So what does that say to you? Uh, I, not I, like, I, based on her, like, I, to be fair, I couldn't answer this question either, but I'm no expert. 
to have her on here and it seems like <laughs> she knows less it's kind of crazy because i don't expect her to be able to answer this or what or the answer that they expect like so yeah not super sure <laughs> well uh, the, the the reason i ask it is clearly the the etfs are trading at a discount a significant discount to the underlying currency and whether that is a good thing from what i hear the etfs isn't actually holding the bitcoin it's just like it's it's yeah from what i hear that's not like people actually holding the crypto so it, it is separate things even though it represents the same thing i don't i don't i don't know i'm not 100 percent certain on how the etfs work i just know that um a lot of the a lot of the people talking about it was talking about how it's a big deal for crypto because it's going to introduce people to holding the actual Bitcoin, but ETFs in in general for big, for crypto, for Bitcoin, it kind of defeated the purpose of crypto in the first place. So, yeah. Thing, a bad thing, what does that really even mean at this point? By the way, this is now down 13%. I, if you flip that the other screen around, I wonder whether the ETF's now gonna be off over 18%. It's a very interesting trade though. It's a great opportunity for someone. You see that? You can arb arbitrate. The, the, the uh, reminds me of a closed up. It's a good opportunity for someone. It's crazy. I don't even know what I just watched. Like this, she didn't bring any value. That's that's insane. <laughs> that that's really insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, so uh, we 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 just got a crazy headline. That that's what this was. This was a crazy headline. Someone who don't, barely knows what they're talking about just said, um. The, the value is being decimated like that that i mean it was a good good headline i guess that did, did the job but yeah um gained nothing from this one but there we have it y'all if you want more content some more a lot more insightful than this um be, be sure to subscribe to the channel check it out drop that thumbs up and yeah i'll catch you all in the next one man peace out fam